Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, is requested by you, the fighting men of the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week till it's over, over there. Okay there, men, let's knock off for a half hour and get a load of your favorite stars answering those swell letters from you guys who are knocking off the axes. And uh, speaking of letters, Command Performance, presented by the Special Service Division of the War Department, is a stamp collector's idea of heaven, for that mail is pouring in from nearly every post office in the United Nations and every whistle stop from the North Pole to the South Pole. One of Hollywood's favorite stars taking a big cut of this mail is that glamorous young lady who was just named the favorite actress of the entire Caribbean area. And fellas, here she is, your mistress of ceremonies, Rita Hayward. And hello again, fellas. And many thanks for those swell letters. They're rolling into command performance so fast that we're thinking of getting a man from the Rand McNally Mac Company just to help us stick pins in all the places you write from. And judging from things in North Africa and elsewhere, he'd better bring along plenty of pins because the AEF is really going places. Uh, and, you know, speaking of pins, things are really sharp around here tonight. And starting things off, I'd, uh, I'd better warn you to dig your heels into the floor and hang on to your seats. Because here comes Paramount's blonde bombshell with a roof-raising ditty entitled, He Says Murder. Fellas, here's Betty Hutton. Almost completely divine But his vocabulary Is killing this romance of mine We get into an intimate situation And then begins this Romeo's conversation He says murder, he says Every time we kiss, he says murder, he says At a time like this, he says murder, he says Is that the language of love? He says solid, he says Takes men as arms, he says solid, he says Meaning all the charms, he says solid, he says Is that the language of love? He says chick, chick, you torture me, zoot Are we living? I'm thinking of leaving him flat He says dig, dig, the jumps, the old ticker is given Now he can talk plainer than that He says murder, he says Every time we kiss, he says murder, he says Keep it up like this and that murder, he says In that impossible tone We'll bring on nobody's murder but his own He says Jackson, he says And my name's Marie, he says Jackson, he says She hoot the snoop to me, he says Jackson, he says Is that the language of love? He says, when he likes my hat, he says, he says, what the heck is that? He says, woo-hoo, he says, is that the language of love? He says, hep, hep, with helium now, babe, we're cooking, and other expressions to wit. He says, we're into groove, and to groove is good looking. He sounds like his uppers don't fit. He says, And many, many thanks. You know, just for contrast, Betty Hutton will do a loud number in a moment. <laughs> but, uh, but comes now a gentleman who draws command performance mail by the bail from all points of the compass, and especially from you men in Great Britain, for he did quite a stretch back of England's footlights before hitting the jackpot in Hollywood. Now, I don't know if you fellas got to see that movie, A Ball of Fire, before you went across, but our friend Richard Hyden made a great hit in that flicker as the funny old professor. You know, Dick happens to be a very good-looking fella, 
But from where I stand, you wouldn't know it. At the moment, chinning with Ken Carpenter, and all made up as the old professor, Richard Hyden. Well, good evening. How are you, Professor? <laughs> oh, do you do? <laughs> well, tell me, Professor, what have you been doing lately? Do you mean uh, what's cooking? Yes, what's cooking? Well, uh, you probably heard I'm running a, a, a hotel. A hotel? <laughs> hotel, yes. <laughs> I call it, uh, I call it Professor Hyden's high-class hotel and hitchhikers <laughs> haven. Well, that sounds attractive. Where is the place, Professor? Oh, uh, you're in the lobby right now, and if you will excuse me, I must get on about my work. I'm horribly busy. Now, let me see. D, E, F, G, H. I got a girl in Kalamazoo. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, my first job is to awaken the guests by telephone. <clears throat> Hello? Room 222? 222, Your rent is due. <laughs> now, what's next? Oh, here comes that heavenly Miss Hayworth. I've got her under my skin. I've got... Good morning, Professor. Hello. Uh, <laughs> you sound very happy. As the day is long, Miss Hayworth, I trust you uh, slept well. Oh, very well, thank you. You know, it was sweet of you to fix up my room so nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing like a few knicker connects to brighten up the place. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, that's true, but, but I don't think I need that lawnmower. Oh, uh, very well. I will exchange it for some other choice piece of a uh, uh, brocca brick, a uh, bracca brock, a uh, broca brick. You mean a uh, uh, bric a brac? I am not here to quibble. <laughs> And, uh, Professor, I think I'll have breakfast in my room tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> very good. I'll slip the continental breakfast under your door. Oh, well, that sounds lovely, but uh, what exactly is the continental breakfast? Uh, Willie, uh, Willie, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> it is composed of carumpets, uh, fin and heddy, a uh, pumpkin pie and marmalade. And I hope you don't like marmalade. Why not? Because it makes the bottom of the door very sticky. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I, I should think so. But, uh, but tell me, how do you slip a piece of pumpkin pie under a door? Oh, it's uh, very simple. You see, I just put the pumpkin pie between the fin and haddy and kick it under. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Professor, you're very cute. Goodbye. Oh, 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 what a girl, a real people do. I'll place my bead on that freckle face. Kid. Well, I'm well, 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 this is a cozy little place. Where's the owner? I am the owner. I am Hyden. With that mug, I don't blame you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> now, can I have a room, something pleasantly furnished? Oh, I have just the thing for you, five dollars a day. Now, how's it furnished? Beautifully. It's all done in par and mar... Ogany. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's 303. 303. Well, that's okay with me, brother. Just give me the key and I'll take the stairway. Oh, uh, there isn't any stairway. Well, then how do I get to the third floor? <laughs> there is no third floor. What? I got room 303. Uh, 303 is on the fourth floor. Now, wait a minute. If there's no third floor, how can I get to the fourth floor? Uh, well, you see, you go up to the fifth floor and walk down one flight. <laughs> Now, hold everything, brother. How do I get to the fifth floor if there's no stairway? Oh, just step into the elevator. Okay, okay. Where is the elevator? Uh, right here. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> no, no, no. Help! Where am I? So that's where the third floor went. <laughs> but don't go away till I get back. Well, where are you going? I'm going to Michigan to meet the sweetest girl in Kalama. Thank you, thank you, Dick Hyden. And good luck to you on your trip to England to entertain the military. Next, fellas, 
We're calling Travis at 8PO811, the gang at 956, and Gerald Lane and the DX Club in New Zealand. Hello to Jimmy Perrine and the Dogies at 980, and to Albert Dean in North Ireland, with a big kiss from a girl in Illinois. And Buffington from Gold Beach, Oregon. Are you still working nights with the RAF in Scotland? Well, it so happens that our next guest on command performance works nights, too, for the U.S. Army, and he has the same boss during the day. He's only the best swing harp player in the whole army, hence the night work entertaining his buddies. So, for all of you guys over there who've been harping at us for a harp number, here's that swell tune, Ain't Misbehavin', by that first-class harpist, Private First Class Gail Lawton. does to a dignified thing like a harp. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Gail Lawton. Well, men, we're traveling the western beams to Private Harold Hyman and his leatherneck friends in the Pacific, and using the northern beams to call Sergeant Jim Jennings at APO 612, and Eldon Bush and the anti-tankers at 944. At 953, hello to the patient waiters of Battery F and to Tom Wyatt of Philadelphia. The old town's proud of you, Tommy. Down there at Trinidad, our best to Private Johnny Smith. And though I'm speaking of just one Johnny Smith, that goes for every Smith in the AEF. To Fenner, Delgado, Glover, Johnson, and Cousins, also at Trinidad, our thanks for those kind words and thoughts. And Palmer Amundsen, somewhere out there in a submarine, I hope you're still okay. And for all of you, here's a song in a baritone voice so many of you like... Water Boy, sung by Kenneth Spencer.
mountain that ring a lot mine boys that ring a lot mine come bust this rock boys from a year to make on all the way to the jail boys yes back to the jail you jack of diamonds you jack of diamonds I know your bow boys yes I know your bow you rob my pocket yes you rob my pocket on the rock of my pocket of silver and gold. Water boy. Where are Much, Ken Spencer. Next, fellas, we answer mail to command performance from so many of you that we'll, well, we'll just say that one of your most beloved radio teams is here tonight, especially for the infantry, wherever you're fighting, and for you Marines, and for you tough sailors of the Navy, Merchant Marine, and Coast Guard. By worldwide acclaim of the AEF, George Burns and Gracie Allen. <laughs> As we look into the Burns household tonight, we find the Burnses in their study. George is nestled comfortably by the fire reading the evening paper, while Gracie sits at her desk trying to balance her checkbook. Oh, George. Yes, dear? How many times does six go into 19? Three and carry one. Oh, thank you. Nine plus four, 13 minus eight plus 45. Is... Oh, George. Yes, dear? Where do I carry it? <laughs> carry what? Whatever it is you carry around to help six get into 19. Carry it back to old Virginia. Let me read my paper. <laughs> well, dear, don't you want to know how my bank balance came out this month? Okay, you win. How did it come out this month? Oh, wonderful. The bank owes me $175. <laughs> The bank owes you $175? Yes, I added it up several times. Uh, at first, they only owed me $6, but I worked on it and worked and on it. And now they owe you $175. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, and it gets better all the time. Well, keep it up, sweetheart. You will break the bank. Oh, I wouldn't want to do that. They're so nice to me down there. The cashier keeps sending me cute little notes. The cashier sends you notes? Well, no, not exactly notes, but he puts his initials on all my checks. What are his initials? NSF. <laughs> NSF means not sufficient funds. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Imagine a great big bank like that without any money. <laughs> Look, uh, let me see those checks. If there's anything wrong, it's not the bank's fault. The bank never makes mistakes. They hired my uncle. My blunder, they? my blunder, yes. 
Now, let's see. What's this uh, check stub here? Oh, oh, that's for the beautiful new hat I bought. Which hat? Uh, the one you bought with feathers? Oh, don't be silly, George. You can't buy a hat with feathers. Got to have, have money. money, yes. Sure. <laughs> you got that. Gracie, you got to be more careful with those checks. Remember, this is a joint account. You know what that is. Oh, sure. A joint account is where the husband deposits the money, and the wife writes the checks, and at the end of the month, if everything balances and everything comes out even... What then? I don't know. It's never happened to me. <laughs> Look at this stuff. A dollar for a bicycle pump, and we haven't got a bicycle. What's that for? Oh, well, that's an economy. That'll save us lots of money on breakfast food. Bicycle pump will save us money on breakfast pump? Yeah, from now on, we'll pump our own rice. <laughs> that will save us easily between 19 and 20 cents a year. Now, you see, I can explain every check stub. Well, all right. Here's, uh, here's one you might explain. One pullover, $25. Look, uh, I don't want to sound like a cheapskate, but isn't that a lot of money for a pullover? Well, he said it was the regular price. Who said? The man on the motorcycle. You got it from a man on a motorcycle Yeah, I went through a red light and he drove Jeff, up and he said pull, pull over, over, and pull I over, said, never I'll mind, pull never over. mind uh, What about this little item? A stub made out to the May Company and it says either $12 or $15 That's confusing, you Oh, well, no, it's not confusing at all, George They had a pair of shoes for $12 and another pair for 15 And I made the stub that way so I could scratch out the price of the shoes I decided not to buy But neither price is scratched out Walking saves tires, George. Uh, both pair. Mm. I thought so, yeah. Uh, and what's this? Nine dollars for suspenders for George for March 16th. Oh, well, that was a little present for you. Well, that's nice, dear, but what's so special about March 16th? Oh, well, you said last night that when you got through paying your income tax this year, you'd be caught... Never in mind, the... never mind. <laughs> What's this item? Eight eighty. Oh, well, that's for tickets to Georgie Jessel's vaudeville show. Remember? Oh yes, it was well worth it too. Never regret money spent on vaudeville. Gosh, vaudeville! Remember the old days when you were back in vaudeville? Oh, remember? I'll never forget them, George. Yes. Remember Altoona? Yeah. Remember how nervous I was the day we opened our act? Oh no, no. I, but I remember how nervous you were the day we closed. Well, <laughs> same thing. Same day. Oh sure. Mm, oh, sure, sure, sure. And remember we played on the bill with Flagenheimer and his train seals? Yeah. Oh, yes. That was that was the week one of the seals disappeared. Yes. And that was the week you got me a new fur coat. <laughs> Why, sure. Well, I, 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 I couldn't help it, Gracie. You know how Otto the seal like fish. Well? Well, one day Otto trapped me in my dressing room, and I was eating a piece of Lindy's smoked salmon. And it was either me or Otto. Oh, George, how could you do it? How could you? To think that all these years I've been walking around town wearing a fellow performer. Oh, well, well. Just so he was not a monologist. Not only yes. that, a hungry one, too. Yes, yes, a hungry one. Uh, look, I'm sorry, Gracie, yeah, but... No excuses, George. It's too late. I'm leaving. I'm leaving this house until the wrong has been righted. Goodbye. Where are you going? Over to the Brown Derby to get my coat a piece of salmon. Well, for heaven's sake. Thanks a lot, George Burns and Gracie Allen. And back now for her second command performance of the evening with the hit tune from her latest picture, Star Spangled Rhythm, Miss Betty Hutton. Thanks, Rita Hayworth, and hiya, fellas. Love to Clem and Vince at APO 667, and lay off those coconuts. Hello to Yardbird Care and Cowboy Janet over in Old Blighty, and Jimmy Hopkins at 860. What's cooking there, boy? Howdy, Sergeant Burns and the mob at 959, and to Ned Wright in the sad sacks of Africa. What the dickens is a sad sack? <laughs> Hello, Given and the gang at APO 845. And Akili at APO 34. Gee, thanks for that chunk of a Nazi troop carrying glider. Brother, that's giving him the old Keeley cure for keeps. And now here's that tune, I'm Doing It for Defense. (laughs) 
Mr. Bone, get this right. I'm your date for tonight. But when I hold you tight, I'm doing it for defense. Months and months, you've been drilled. Now it's time you were thrilled. Start from here, then we fill. I'm doing it for defense. If you touch my lips and you feel me respond, it's because I just can't afford a bond. If you think you're Cary Grant, brother, relax. You're just a rebate on my income tax. Don't get hurt. Don't get sore. I'm a pal. Nothing more. This ain't love. This is war. I'm doing it for defense. Once I start, I can't quit. I said I do my best. Sorry for the short end. I'm doing it for defense. Orders are for today. Just relax. Come what may. Duty calls I obey. I'm doing it for defense. Your morale needs building up. You must agree. And morale stays built when it's built by me. Put your face to starboard and give us a kiss. Heaven help a sailor on a night like this. Let's pretend I'll attack. This is Rita Hayworth, speaking for all of us on Command Performance. As always, you have our love and the best of luck, and our promise to do our very best to obey the commands you send in to this personal show of yours. Well, it's time now for that worldwide good night to each one of you, wherever you are. But I, well, I just want to say this. When you read what the United Nations are doing in Africa and the Mediterranean, and the work of those big bombers that fly over the Alps, it reminds you of an old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day. Well, maybe Rome wasn't built in a day. But the way things look now, Mussolini could fall apart any minute. Good night, fellas. Command Performance is produced for you men of the Armed Forces of the United Nations by the Special Service Division of the War Department of the United States of America. This broadcast has been a part of our English language shortwave service.